Hello there, Mr. Silverini. Hey, Tony, nice of you to join me. And the reason I called you here is because, well, you know, you are my employee and I gotta make sure you're safe out there, okay? I wanna know that you got protection. You mean like with the ladies? No, not with the ladies, okay? You know what I mean. If you run into one of Macaroni's goons out there in an alley somewhere, I gotta know that you got a way to protect yourself. You know, they wear armor when they're out there on the street. I, I got it, boss, I got it, I got it. Okay, let's see what you got. I got right here an 88 Magnum, custom made just for me. It shoots through armor, it shoots through the victim, shoots through walls, the tree outside. That's pretty impressive, that's pretty impressive. Anyways, I'll put that thing away now, okay? That's what I wanted to know, I just wanted to know that you got protection, so that when you're out there, you run across one of Macaroni's guys, you got a way to protect yourself, all right? All right. Anyways, I'm done here. I'm done reading all this stuff, so I'm gonna uh, get out of here, okay? So boss, uh, what do you use for protection? So what do I use for protection? Yeah, I got a typewriter. A typewriter? It's not just any typewriter. It's a Chicago typewriter. I ain't playing around with those goons. <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome back to Small Caliber Arms Review. I'm Richard and today I have an American icon here. This is a Tommy gun, Chicago typewriter, street sweeper, Chicago sweeper. It's known by all kind of names, but most commonly it's known as the Tommy gun. And it was developed uh, just before World War I ended uh, for a trench sweeper is what its uh, intended use was. And it had a shorter barrel on its original design. Uh, it also had a different fore end on it. But uh, this is the civilian semi-auto version of it, and it is just a wonderful piece of uh, history, I guess. Iconic American history. Um, this one is a steel one. It is very heavy. It weighs in at right around 13 pounds empty. So it's a beast. Uh, it's all steel receiver on it. It's a direct blowback, 45 ACP, which is a pretty hefty round. Um, it's a pretty hefty gun too, so there's not going to be a whole lot of recoil on this thing with as much weight as it's got, especially if I filled the magazine up all the way, the 50 round anyways. Um, the walnut stock on it is, um, it's kind of odd, it's actually in three pieces, you got the wooden foregrip on it, you got a wooden pistol grip, and you got the wooden butt stock, and it kind of brings it up there to get it in front of your eyes, but uh, it's probably a little more comfortable to shoot under your arm, something like you would have seen in the movies, you know, from back during the Prohibition era. This was a really popular gun among law enforcement and outlaws back in the day. Anyways, we're gonna get a few rounds in this drum magazine here, and we're gonna go ahead and give it some shots at like the seven yard target. It is a uh, close range gun, although it does have a flip up sight here to uh, enable you to shoot much farther distances. Uh, it's really not that good of a gun for it. It does have a long barrel, which is going to aid in the uh, accuracy and velocity. But uh, when you've got that sight folded down, you also have a little sight here at the back. Your charging handle is on top there, and it has a cutout so you can peer right through the sight there and see the blade front sight on the uh, cuts compensator that is pinned to the barrel there. Uh, pretty cool gun. Like I said, we're going to get this drum loaded up. The problem with this drum though is I do not have one of the third hands which is a little tool they make that slides up underneath there and holds open the, uh, the bolt hold open on it. Uh, the drum does not have that feature on it. I do have the stick magazine which does have the feature to hold open the uh, bolt. So this one is really a pain to get that drum off of there without the bolt being open because when the bolt is closed it's in the way and the drum slides in from side to side. Now right now I've got the drum or the uh, bolt held open so taking it off should not be a problem. Piece of cake there. But once that bolt is forward you got to get that pulled back. The only way to really do that unless you've got three hands actually is to get this little piece underneath here lifted up while you're pulling the bolt back and that'll lock it in the open position. Right now, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to load this magazine up and then we'll take a few shots with it and see how it does. All right, first thing you gotta do is get the drum apart. Now you've got this winding key on here. There's a little tab underneath here. You gotta pull it up and then you can slide that key back. 
it does lock onto this shaft right here. There's a little groove underneath it there, and it locks into there, and that's there's a certain way it's got to go on there so that it uh, locks up together. But anyways, just pull the top right off of it. It's kind of a snug fit. Once you got the top off, you'll see there's a bunch of chambers in there. Now, I'm only going to load a few rounds in this thing because... Really, the, uh, the drum magazine is kind of a pain. I don't need to fire a whole lot of rounds with it anyways. But what you do is you stack your rounds in there. There's little snail trails around there kind of that the, um, the rounds follow in. And each one of these sections here holds 10 rounds in it. So you get five in this one, and you'll get five right behind it. All right, now each one of these, not all of them. This one's going to hold 10. This one's going to hold 10. This one's going to hold 10. This one's going to hold five and then five. There are places in there, but you can't put, you don't put rounds there. You put the rounds, I'm sorry. Yeah, you put the rounds right there. Anyways, we're only gonna load like 20 rounds in this one. So I'll put 10 in the first two. Now, one of the things the GIs didn't like about this is these things rattled when they were filled. There's nothing to really hold them tight. The stick magazines, they load just about like any other stick magazine out there. You just push it in and push it back. They are staggered in there. So you can see they kind of, you know, back and forth. Double stack magazine. And this is, I believe it's a uh, 20 rounder. Somewhere around there. But anyways, we're gonna get uh, a few of them loaded up in here too. Now these won't rattle in there because the spring holds pretty tight on them. In the drum magazine, the, the tension is wound up on the spring there and then it kind of holds them in there, but still they don't fit in there tight like they do in the stick magazine. Stand corrected, this is a 30 round magazine. Anyways, We'll do 30 in there and 20 in the drum. Yeah, it seems kind of backwards, doesn't it? This one has a higher capacity, but we're not gonna fire as many of them in it just because it is such a pain to get off of there uh, because it does not have last round hold open on the bolt. Now to put it in there, or to uh, put your cover back on it, make sure you've got these little bumps and notches and everything, they have to line up just right. Then your center shaft has to line up. All right, once it's on there, it says right on the bottom here, wind nine, to, nine or 11 clicks. So we're gonna wind this thing up and see how it does. All right, we'll go ahead and get this one put back on and then we'll give it a few shots. All right, you gotta slide those in there. You got your mag release right here, so you're gonna have to lift that up a little bit. That's got a little bump right there that catches in here to uh, hold the drum in there. So once you get that in there, Pull that up a little bit. Okay, got it in there. I had to fight with it a little bit. That round sticks up a little bit, so it's got to kind of go underneath there and it gets pushed down a little bit. But then your mag catch right here catches in that spot on the drum there. You can look inside the chamber there and see there's a round right there ready to go. All we got to do is release the bolt and it's ready to fire. Now the originals, from what I hear, fired from an open bolt, which is illegal for civilians to own without the proper paperwork or anything. This fires from a closed bolt since it's a semi-auto. The bolt actually has to close all the way. Then the hammer or firing pin is released and, you know, sets off the round. Anyways, let's get this, uh, this thing loaded up and give it a shot. That's all you got to do to load one, pull it back and let it go. I'm going to go ahead and shoulder it. It's kind of awkward to do because it does stick out there a pretty good ways. And I got my seven yard target there. We'll give it a try, see how it does. All right, there's three shots. The safety's right here on the side. We'll go ahead and put it on safe. We'll go over there and take a look at those three shots. It's pretty close, but I want to show them to you anyways. Okay, there's my little three shot group. One, two, three, uh, seven yards, pretty close, but still not bad at all. Now it's really an awkward gun to hold because it is so heavy and it's so far out there. It, uh, you'll feel it if you're not used to it anyways. And I'm really not used to holding one out like that. All right, now this is probably the only gun that is really acceptable to fire from the hip. 
uh, because that's the way you're usually seen in the movies anyways. Take it off safe and give it a few hip shots from here. sure exactly what's going on there. There we go. And a few feet issues there. It's an extremely hard bolt to pull back too. There's not much of a handle there. And this thing relies on friction. All right, that was the last round there. Now, like I said, it's not supposed to hold open, but for some reason it did, and I'm okay with that to take this thing off of here. That was pretty nice. The chamber is empty. Let's put the stick magazine on there. All right, the stick magazine just slides right up in this little groove on the bottom here. You've got the little piece on the rail right there, or on the magazine. And then you can see everything right in there. It is locked on there. Make sure your bolt or your magazine catch is catching there. And there's the stick magazine. Let's give that a try. Definitely a little less weight on it, but um, not quite as high a capacity. Let's see if we have any issues with this. Yeah, that's a whole lot better. And there we went through the 30 rounds in that one pretty quick. I did manage to get a little, uh, little bump out of it there. But anyways, taking this one off is a whole lot easier because you don't have to worry about the magazine, uh, the bolt holding open, and it doesn't slide in sideways. It drops straight down under, from underneath it. Makes it a whole lot easier to do mag changes. All right, there's the 50 rounds I fired through the two magazines. I only put 20 in the drum magazine and then the 30 in the stick magazine. Um, so my first three shots were right in here. So the rest of them were from the hip pretty much. And I mean, it's a pretty intuitive gun. Uh, just about where you point it is where it's gonna go, especially at a close range there. So everything is pretty much right there in center mass. Got one in the throat there, but um, yeah, it's not too bad, and that's a hard-hitting round. Uh, 45 ACP is a pretty heavy, you know, fat, slow bullet, but it does the job. And for what this gun was designed for was, you know, going in the trenches during the World Wars and, uh, you know, clearing them out, sweeping them out, the trench broom. All right, guys, it's the Tommy gun. It's uh, the Thompson 1927A1. It's the civilian version of it. It is a direct blowback. Uh, 45 ACP semi-automatic. Um, it's a heavy gun, very heavy gun. And like I said, it's more comfortable to shoot down here from the hip than it is to shoulder this thing because it is so far out there. There's no adjustment on this stock either. And that much weight, that far out, it's, it's, it'll uh, take its toll on you after a while. But putting it right up underneath your shoulder there and holding on to it and doing its thing, it's uh, pretty comfortable to shoot. Um, this is not mine. This is a loner. Um, I'm not too sure I like the, uh, the drum magazine on it. Uh, it's a little finicky. And like I said, I don't have that little third hand tool that goes in here, which makes it a lot easier to uh, get your magazine off and on there because you've got to lock the bolt open. If you don't have it, it's really a pain to take that magazine off there. It really is. Um, you can lock the bolt open by pulling it back and right underneath there, there's a little tab that you can lift up and that will lock the bolt open. 
Um, it's pretty easy to take down too. We'll get this thing inside and I'll show you how it comes apart. I got to clean it up anyways. But um, it's a neat gun. It's an iconic gun. Uh, they've been around for you know almost a hundred years now. Pretty close, anyways. It's a. Uh, it's just a, a neat piece of machinery. Um, I like it. I don't know that I like the hundred round or the fifty round or the hundred round. They do make a hundred round drum for it too. I don't know if I like that. I do like the stick magazine because, like I said, it's a lot easier to take this thing and you know shove it up in there. And uh, to change it out, just take your thumb and, and release that magazine and pull it out, grab the next one and put it in there. I think most of the GIs, from what I've read, preferred the stick magazines too. They were easier to load. You didn't have to take anything apart, just feed your rounds right into it. They were easier to carry than the big old drum. You had to have a pouch or something for them to, to be carried in. They rattled a lot. They made a little bit of noise. Of course, if you're on the battlefield and you're going in sweeping out trenches, I don't think you're trying to sneak up on anybody. You're probably trying to get in there and get it cleared and, you know, move on. But uh, it's a neat gun. They've been around forever. Probably made most famous by, you know, the gangster movies uh, during the Prohibition era. Um, I mean, that's how they earned the name, the Chicago typewriter and stuff like that. Anyways, uh, let's get this thing inside and we'll get it taken apart, get it cleaned up and everything. And I'll show you how that does. All right, we got the Tommy gun off the range down here on the gun bench. And the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure it's clear. There's no rounds in it anywhere, no magazine in it. Um, the chamber is clear. And we're going to go ahead and pull the trigger. That goes ahead and releases the firing pin there. And then there's a button underneath the back here, right in the back. It's kind of difficult to get to. We got to get that button pushed up and then get this thing slid apart. Okay, so here's the button I'm talking about right underneath there. It's kind of difficult to see and kind of difficult to get to. But you got to push that up, and once you've got that pushed up, then you can slide the lower part off of the upper. Now, as you slide it back, there's going to be a spot right about where your safety is that that pin is going to want to drop down in there again. So we'll get it slid back right there. So what you're going to want to do is get a screwdriver and get it up underneath there, and you're going to be pushing up on the bottom of that pin there again. Doesn't take a lot of pressure, but you got to get it under there. And then once you've got it past that, it may want to catch again. There we go. Be careful with it because that last little bit is where it's going to let loose at. All right, once you got them apart, you can get in here and clean this all out. And it's pretty dirty. Um, we'll get this all cleaned up, wiped down, lubed up and everything. And then we'll get it put back together. But to take your bolt out. Now, you've got a pin on the back here. You've got a button back there. This is that pin you had to push up to get the two pieces to slide apart. So what you got to do is you got to push this in. This is your guide rod and your recoil spring is down inside there. And you got two recoil springs right there too that the bolt slides on those two rods there. But anyways, we'll get this pushed in and get this pulled up. Now that's kind of a pain to get a hold of too. You uh, might want to get a screwdriver underneath it and it does not, you don't want to put a lot of pressure on it, just enough to get it up there to get your fingers on it because it's a little oily. It's kind of hard to grab a hold of. But once you got that up where you can grab it, it's got a little bit of pressure on it, not bad, but hang on to it and pull it all out together. You got the two springs on there. Those are your two rods there that your bolt rides on. This is where this pin, your guide rod goes in. It locks in that groove right there. So we'll go ahead and get these all pulled out. Take your main spring out of there too. Just slide it out of that hole in the back where you're recoil spring was and then your bolt you can pull your bolt all the way back now you've got your charging handle on there too so it's got to come back and go through that hole right there once you've got that lined up you can pull the whole thing out there's your charging handle right there and I tell you what this charging handle is not the most comfortable thing to grab a hold of it's got that slot cut in it there so it kind of leaves a little bit of sharp edges there when you get your hand on there to pull this back and you're pulling against those three springs, it gets a little, uh, little tough. But anyways, it's easy to get in here and clean everything up. You can see there's a lot of carbon build up there on the extractor and the bolt face and everything. Uh, your firing pin is connected to this setup right here. There's where it comes through. And uh, we'll get it all cleaned up and get it all put back together.
All right, once you got everything cleaned up and lubed up, slide it back in there, make sure everything moves like it's supposed to. You got everything lubed up nice and clean and sliding freely. Go ahead and shove everything forward. Take your guide rod and your recoil spring, put it back in there. Little piece of fuzz. Make sure it is going in that one opening on the bolt, the larger one. Take your two guide rods here, your two springs, and stick one out a little bit farther. That way you can get it lined up in the hole and then get the other one lined up in the hole. And be careful when you push these in there. You don't want to push and get your springs in a bind or anything. You want to, well, first thing you want to do is turn it the right way. That goes down because that has got to clip onto that, your uh, bolt. So now, get one in there, then get your other one in there and carefully push it back in there and then you can get it started down behind there. You'll have to push that pin in, probably move your bolt a little bit and drop it right in there. Now your recoil spring and guide rod won't come out because that piece has got it locked in there and you should be able to, it's going to be a little tough, but make sure it's everything's in there locked in nice and tight and we got to get the trigger group cleaned up some too. Now this doesn't quite get as dirty down in here, so we're going to wipe it down real good. Anywhere you see wear in there, you want to make sure you get a little bit of lube on it. All right, we should be ready to slide everything back together. Now you're going to want to make sure that that pin right there is going to want to get hung up again when you go to put it back together, right down there where your safety selector is. Right down in here, you can see the safety selector, when you put it in safe, it moves over and keeps the sear from being able to drop down and releasing the bolt. When you've got it on fire, it can drop down farther and lets the, the bolt fly forward, the hammer fly forward, hit the firing pin and ready to go. So anyways, when, that, when you push this back on, that pin's gonna wanna drop down in there. So we're probably gonna have to take the screwdriver again and pick it up to get it to slide past there. And there it is, it hit. Get that pin up and we're good to go. Once you've slid it on there all the way, it's locked in there. That pin has come out and kept, it'll keep that from uh, sliding off there. Go ahead and function check it. Go ahead and see if you can get your bolt to hold open there by pushing that little piece up underneath there. Like I said, it's a pain and this is also a pain. That really digs into the back of your hand. I am not a fan of that whatsoever. Good, good gun to have some gloves on. Go ahead and release it and function check it. Sounds good. All right, should be good to go. We'll give it a light wipe down on the outside just to make sure it's got a little bit of oil to protect it. And uh, everything should be good. All right, guys, that's it. That's the Thompson 1927A1 or the Tommy gun. Um, it's a, a pretty cool gun. It's an iconic gun. Uh, it's just, I mean, it brings back the gangster era, I guess. Um, it doesn't necessarily have a practical purpose now. Like I said, it was designed to uh, sweep trenches. It was called the trench broom by the uh, creator. And um, it's a really neat gun. It's a really heavy gun, I can tell you that. And it's pretty involved when you go to clean this thing up. It takes, it takes a little bit of time. You're not just gonna, you know, wipe it down real quick and you're done. You need to get in there and get everything cleaned out. You want to protect it. Um, I'm a fan of it. I'm not a fan of the drum magazine though. I don't like the way they go on. I do like the stick magazines, but it just doesn't look right without a drum magazine. I mean, you always seen in the gangster movies, they got this with a drum on there and it's just cool. Anyways, thanks for taking a look at it with me and I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you could, hit this button up here to subscribe. Hit this button over here to check out some of my other videos. And thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review. You filthy animals.